Hey, yo, what's up? This is your boy, Patrick Salvador, man from Mbokolo. The girls, them sugar, the most handsome West Nyla. After Idi Amin. <laughs> Original. My name is Ronnie McVex, a.k.a. Mr. Good News. And, and you're watching the Zap Show. Zap Show. Right here on the West Nile web. West Nile web. I didn't call my name, but it's okay. With. He wants to be mentioned. Joshua. <laughs> my name is Josh Joshua and this is the Zap Show. We broadcast on the West Nile web that is on Facebook, on YouTube and of course via website that is www.westnileweb.com and I'm so happy that you're able to join us in this episode. And by the way, for those who are asking about the t-shirt, yes, I know that's, that has been a very common question running through our Facebook page, running through us, the presenters and of course the producer of the show. But we, we can promise you one thing, that uh, the, 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 this t-shirt is already in, this, in stock, they're already there in the stores will be unveiling to you very soon but and of course we'll also be giving you how to win these t-shirts because uh, well we, we 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 might want to give it like that but we might also say you know let's let's win it some way but in the meantime what you can do is just click on the share button please share this video with your friends with your family and invite people to watch it and maybe you never know you can be one of the winners who'll be picking this t-shirt anyways uh, this is as absolutely as I said and uh, in the show I have for you a couple of content we're talking about celebrity gossip we're talking about the movie of the week we're talking about tourism site, we're talking about uh, the interviews, and this time around, by the way, we have twisted it a little bit, so the person I'm going to bring to you here is going to be somebody awesome and amazing, and you'll be seeing this guy very, very soon. So, and this is the Zap Show. We broadcast on the West Nile web, that is on Facebook, on YouTube, and of course via website, that is www.westnileweb.com, and I'm so happy that you're able to join us in this episode. And by the way, for those who are asking about the t-shirt, yes, I know that's, that has been a very common question running through our Facebook page running through as the presenters and of course the producer of the show but we, we can promise you one thing that uh, the, 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 this t-shirt already in this in stock they are already there in the stores will be unveiling to you very soon but and of course we'll also be giving you how to win these t-shirts because uh, well we, we 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 might want to give it like that but we might also say you know let's let's win it some way but in the meantime what you can do is just click on the share button please share this video with your friends with your family and invite people to watch it and maybe you never know you can be one of the winners who be picking this t-shirt. Anyways, uh, this is the Zap Show, as I said, and uh, in the show, I have for you a couple of content. We're talking about celebrity gossip. We're talking about the movie of the week. We're talking about tourism site. We're talking about uh, the interviews. And this time around, by the way, we have twisted it a little bit. So the person I'm going to bring to you here is going to be somebody awesome and amazing. And you'll be seeing this guy very, very soon. And this week on the Zap Show, we bring to you one of the oldest and the, uh, the second biggest uh, basilica in the whole of East Africa. And this is Lodonga Basilica. Here is the picture. My goodness, this week I won't mention the name of this movie, but this is Bulade. Here is the movie trailer. This is the grill for you. I call it the Obama. Como te llamas, my amo? The pit bull. I call this the big black machine. <laughs> Lisa, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh my god. Do you smell gas? A little bit. Came out, but I was nervous. That's just a quick okay, one. Um, no, that's um. Ah! Ah! I got 13 degree burns on my ass. You're the best salesman I've ever seen. I can see you being a stockbroker like me. Can't you give me a job? I wish I could. My boss won't let me hire a dropout. Look at Mark Zuckerberg. He dropped out of Harvard. You dropped out of Piedmont High. I was a couple credits shy of graduating. I got to get my GED. I'm the principal of this school. I can do whatever I want. You're in my house. Are you using a black voice? No, I don't hear color. All right, let's do some introductions. My name is Carrie. I'm here to make a little extra cash so that I can afford this warrant that I got. But that's none of y'all business. Welcome to night school. This book is kind of thick. I thought it'd be more like a leaflet. 
If you're not gonna do the work, drop the class. Just, no, I'm gonna do the work. You'll see. We'll see. Yes, we will. Great. Superb. Excellent. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be a financial analyst? I am, and it starts immediately. I've been waiting on the Lord to bring me a pint-sized little man who can fill this out. Come and get your chicken from the Lord. You take that test, or I tenderize your ass. I rebuke you. Take this damn suit off. Are you trying to get your GED? Are you trying to get your GED? Yes. You can get out my way, bitch. Suspicions were correct. <laughs> Boom. You're clinically dumb. There is no cure for what you have. Oh my God. I got learning herpes. I got the gift that keep on giving. Boy. You did the black voice thing with him? It's not a black voice. Not a black voice. You don't remember when you was in that meeting, you was like, we gonna get it lit up in here, this meeting lit. It was very lit. I keep it 100. When have I ever not kept it 100? Mm. <laughs> and there's the movie, it's called Night School. And by the way, Night School uh, says, uh, as you watch the, uh, Kevin Hart, this guy's funny, this guy's funny. Anyways, up next is our interview over this week. And by the way, we have for you interesting guest, Salvador, man from Angwakolo, Patrick himself. He is a world-class entertainer, a comedian known to the world, and right now Uganda's best. He is uh, the man himself. Salvador, a drinky Patrick, and we're having him today on the Zap Show. Man, you're most welcome. Blessed, man. man, I'm so uh, excited to have you on the show. Yeah, it's good to be back home then. Like I've interacted with you a couple of times yes. in Kampala and Arua. Yeah. I see whenever you are in Arua, your mood is different. Yeah, it's very different because because there's no place like home, man. Okay. There's no place like home, so it's always a yes for me every time somebody invites me to come and perform here. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, first of all let's do a Zap show selfie before we continue. We're yeah. gonna do it in this live. Okay. Um, it's for Zap, and then there we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I made you look nice. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I just hope this interview won't be a comedy show after here because you'll say your jokes here and people will say, "Ah, for us we had." We, we, we are done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, by the way, um, when was the last time you were in West Nile, particularly? Wow. Um, I think that was last year in, uh, is it this, when we did the mega fest mm. at uh, Onduparaka. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the, the last time I was here. Okay. So it's almost like, it's been over a year. Yeah, it's been over a year, so yeah. It's, uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> but w whenever you're now in West Nile, yes. uh, what, tell us about your feeling, the experience. How do you feel when you're back home, you know? You know, there are, there are things I do in, in, back in Kampala which really keep me connected like i like looking for local food mm. which brings me back home yeah. that one i'm a big freak even even my wife knows that you know i, I don't like junk mm. so i can leave the house and then i go and i look for a local restaurant whether it's a, a northern uh, restaurant mm. as long as there's something that reminds me of home mm. so that's how i keep in touch so like right now you're here you where there's abundant local exactly food. I, and we had a, we had one of the best meals last night. <laughs> it was a buffet of Enyasa. Yeah. There was meat. There was uh, beans. There was chicken. It was just a whole variety of different foods. Okay. And man, it took me back home. Okay. I was like, yeah. Talking about talking about food, um, many people actually claim that the same food cooked in Kampala, yes. a local food in Arua, mm. cooked in Kampala, that form, it, it tastes different. It's right? very very different from okay. because I think in Kamp Kampala there's accessibility to all these bazungu spices yeah. and you want to make it look <laughs> exotic so you add those extra spices which spoil the, 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 the taste the, the authentic taste of the food okay. yet yeah, they use the real stuff mm. yeah they don't add flavors and everything <laughs> they use the real stuff <laughs> even the ochocha, ochocha of, of, of kampala is very different from mm. the one here mm. yeah this one i don't know what's happening i remember well, i went for a wedding in uh, the, uh in is the place called kasubi Kisu, Chisubi. they are both there's kasubi there's chisubi there's, there's one chisubi I is in tebe road I kasubi is the one in uh that side of Namungona, Nankolavi. That one. Yes. Uh -huh. I, 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 like I was asking for a Yes. The guy looked at me and told me, ah, 
you man, do you know what you're asking for? I think I look, do, do I look like a Muganda? No, you don't. <laughs> you are no, you are nose is well shaped. <laughs> Anyways, that was just the rough year. Uh, straight up to uh, our interview of today. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Salvador? Because uh, we, we hear from places, we hear from uh, news, we hear from uh, the media, Salvador. But yeah. who is Salvador? Wow, uh, where do I start? Salvador is uh, a father. Uh, of two very beautiful kids, a uh, professional, I'm an engineer, but I left the profession to, 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 do, to start a new one, comedy, okay. which is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Wow. Uh, I am a free guy. I am a free guy. I, I don't like, you know, doing things which are beyond my means, mm. things like showing off. I, mean, I just want to be me, mm. you understand? Mm. Because uh, one of the things that so many people, celebrities do is, they work very, very hard to become famous. Mm. And now when they become famous, they now work very hard not to be recognized. <laughs> you find a guy in the club with shades, a hoodie, with six <laughs> bouncers, mm. for what? Mm. So I'm just a free guy. Mm. I'm not down to earth. That I'll not lie to you. Okay. I have my little pride mm. uh, because I've worked hard for it. <laughs> so I cannot let people step on me. Uh, so, and uh, I, I tell you the, 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 the truth, the way it is. I don't like keeping things in my heart. Yeah. So if something is wrong, we sit down, we sort it out. If we cannot sort it out, you go your way, I go my way. Okay. Yeah, but, but I don't like keeping things in my heart. Wow. Yeah, so, and I'm basically an open book. Uh, now, yeah. the, the, the particularly, tell us about your, uh, uh, your being in West Nile before you moved out of uh, West Nile. Yeah, uh, being in West Nile was when I was in school. I was born and raised in Kampala. Mm. Uh, I came here in, to do my Oliver at St. Charles Luanga mm. from 98 mm. to 2001. Four years, no repeating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and uh, after, after my Oliver, mm. that, is, that's, that was the longest tint mm. I've ever had in, in, in West Nile, particularly in Koboko, because uh, every time I would come, I would, I would go back home, of course, every time, but I would come here, and uh, this was my best. Okay. So for four years, between 98 and 2001, this is where home was. So um, are you a Kakwa? Yes. Do you, do you speak Kakwa? No. It is one of actually the best, the major reasons that they brought me to St. Charles Luang. Unfortunately, I ended up learning more Lugba <laughs> <laughs> than Kakwa. Because the Kakwas, the Kakwas in my school by that time were very, very proud. They were very, very, how do they say? They isolated themselves so much. Uh -huh. So if you didn't speak the language, mm. you were out of their their clique. And yet, the Lugbaras were very welcoming. Okay. I was sleeping in a dormitory called uh, Chifaldi. Mm. Uh, is it Chifaldi? Yes. Eh? No, not Chifaldi. Embassy. Yeah. It was called Embassy. Uh, embassy is where I was sleeping. Mm. And Embassy was made up of, like every dormitory had its own tribe. Mm. Like people from Maracha, Vura, we are in a dormitory called Nkuruma. Mm. <laughs> eh? <laughs> then there was Tiger. Mm. That one was full of Kakwas. Uh, Chifaldi was full of Kakwas. Kennedy, mostly A-level students, but most of them were Kakwas. Mm -hmm. So uh, embassy was done, which was, and it was the open, eh, on, it was just too, too nice, you so understand? You express yourself. That's where you express yourself. So I learned more Lugbara mm -hmm. than Kakwa because the Lugbaras in my school were so open. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but a couple of times when you're on stage, you, you, I don't see you so much engaged in Lugbara. No, I cannot, no. because I'm not so fluent. Okay. Yeah, I'm not so fluent. It's very, very hard. Even if you've watched me perform, mm. I, I hardly speak Luganda on stage. Yeah. I'll speak a word or two. Mm. Because, you know, there are, there are words that you would say that mean, like, four different things. Yeah, sure. Now, the way you say it can either break or make you. Okay. You understand? Okay. So you would rather stay away from it completely, <laughs> <laughs> other than throw yourself in the deep end. Okay. Yeah. Um, we also, we have had like a, a couple of stories about you, how you came into the limelight, and uh, uh, actually, particularly, I will tell you one. Yeah. Uh, somebody actually said that the way uh, the, the day you had your breakthrough was the time you told people, people are not laughing. Am I not funny? Then that's when they laughed, and that's when you got your, break, uh, you, your breakthrough and the, and the limelight. Yeah. But tell us, uh, particularly because we're more interested right now in your story yeah. to empower somebody out there who wants to be like the Salvador, yeah. all right? So tell us about a bit of your story. I think it was God because uh, it was 2009. I was by then working for MTN uh, as a fixed line switch engineer. And uh, there was an advert in the papers that said, hey, apply, we are looking for Uganda's funniest person. 
So my sisters pushed me. They were like, ah, Salvador, Patrick. By then I was called Patrick. Patrick, you can do this. You are funny. You can win this. I said, eh, hey, OK. So I applied. Mm. The auditions came. We went to Theatre La Bonita. Mm. Uh, I deceived my boss that I was going to, to go and do accountability. <laughs> Usual accountability can't even take the whole day. Yeah. So I went. I sat. I registered at midday. Mm. But I went on stage. I auditioned at 8 PM. Wow. So one of the things that I can say is perseverance mm. and patience is very, very important when you're about to make a decision. That's true. Because if I had given up, I almost gave up because the kind of people <laughs> I was surrounded by mm. in that audition room, people were clowns, people would get donuts <laughs> from their pantry and they eat on stage. <laughs> it was disgusting. <laughs> so I was around these people. There was no one who was decent. Yeah. There were very, very few people who were decent. Even Pablo. Pablo didn't even stay in the, 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 the theater. Mm. He came because now he was like already respected because he was a comedian before. So they it told him the exact the Yes, they told him this. They told him the exact time mm. he was supposed to audition. So he just came, entered audition and left. Me, I didn't know. I sat there, you move. When another person moves, <laughs> you move. You... When I entered, I auditioned. There were three judges. Mm. I made two of them laugh, the Ugandans. So the Muzungu was like, OK. If the, you could make these guys laugh, then it means you have something. So I went through. So from uh, 100, we went to 40. From 40, we went to 20. And then they separated us. That's the, the, the same idea that was like yeah. in the comic. Yeah. And then we broke down. And then I came number two. Mm, wow, wow. That is when I realized, OK, I think this is something that I was meant to do. Mm. So I did not let the spirit die. So my breakthrough show was in 2011. Mm. And uh, I must say it was also God, because I was invited just to call, and there were five musicians yeah. to entertain guys. Mm -hmm. So my work, and there were two official MCs. So my work was to come crack a joke, and then invite an artist. Crack a joke, and then invite an artist. But the person told me, Salvador, people Hi. like you, and, uh, but you go and do jokes about mm. eh, sex, love. These are corporate people. They don't like those jokes. So please keep it clean. clean. So I did all my jokes, the clean ones, they got finished. <laughs> I called on the last musician. The last musician came and performed. Now I was backstage enjoying, I was drinking. Power went off. Lights went off mm. for about an hour. Wow. So when the lights went off, the pro, uh, events manager was like, oh my god, what is going on? He started running around, running around, running around. Then he told the organizer, please buy, buy me some time. Mm. Buy me 40 minutes. So the organizer came to me and said, hey, Salvador, uh, they have said, hey, please, can you go on stage? And I said, no, nah, me, I've used all my clean jokes. <laughs> they said, don't, don't care. Mm. Just go on stage, keep people entertained. And I went on stage for 40 minutes. Yeah. And I performed all the jokes I had ever performed in my life. And everybody was literally on the floor. Wow. And when I just said, thank you so much, that was my time, the lights came on. It was like as if we had planned it. Because mm -hmm. when I said, thank you, that's my time, the lights came on, I walked off stage. People stood up, standing ovation. That is when they did the final catwalk, and then they crowned Miss Uganda. So the end mm. of the whole show was so nice. People in the audience thought it was part of the program. Mm. Wow. They started saying, ah, the way this guy came in, the way they switched off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they actually thought this was It was part of the program. <laughs> I liked how they brought in Salvador. Now they all gave us the real him. Mm. La, 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 la. So the organizer started giving me shows because they were so wow. impressed. Wow. They realized that, OK, this guy did us a favor and everything. So that's when I started getting corporate shows, end of year parties. I was doing breakfast meetings. I was doing one. And that's how it started going on slowly by slowly. And here we are. OK. Um, for those who have just joined right now, this is a Zap Show. And please like the, our page that is uh, Western Web right now. And you can share this video as well to your friends because we have Man from Mbogo, Salvador himself yeah, as well. So um, bef before I talk about the comic, because I have a few things to ask about the comic. Yeah. But before that, uh, you've done one man shows uh, twice. Yeah, yes. twice. Uh, called Man from Mbogo. Yes. Uh, one thing, uh, people claim that th there's actually no word called Mbogo. Yes, there is no word Clearly, called yeah. Mbogo. Uh -huh. The word is Mbogo. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but I, I decided to call it Mbogo because it is easier to pronounce. Okay. Because that's something you can sell. You cannot be going to Nigeria and say, Ingbo Kolo, they say, Ingbo Kolo, Ingbo, Ingbo. So <laughs> you will be arguing with people for nothing. <laughs> so I decided to keep it simple mm. and call it Ombo Kolo. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Wow, because uh, people just came and said, no, I thought... Uh, yeah. the, the first show, uh, how long do were you on stage? I was on stage, because I was very excited. Right. I was on stage for two and a half hours. Jesus. <laughs> and you had jokes throughout? Throughout. And you know, that is one of the shows that people said, okay, Salvador has matured. Salvador is now a fully-fledged comedian. Wow. Because nobody could believe that I would contain, I would sustain the audience laughing from the beginning mm. until the end. In fact, when I finished, everybody stood up. Okay. Everybody stood up, they were on their feet, they were so happy. The reviews in the papers were amazing. Mm. That's why the, the second season was just e effortless. Okay. People knew what to expect. So they came ready and they had a good time. Mm. And, 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 and the time, of course, kept on reducing. Yes, yeah. There's a point where I'll just be doing only 45 minutes, because that is the standard okay. DVD okay. of 45 minutes. For, uh, for the one-man show? Yeah, for the one-man show. Okay. So the standard time is, is 45 minutes. Mm. That's the one that you can now sell. Okay, yeah. uh, but uh, let's let's talk about uh, the the uh, the West Nile. Did they support you in this particular the West Nile? I will Kampala. be very honest with you. The first man from Ombokolo, I think, uh, forty percent of the audience were from West Nile, from Arua. Wow. Uh, they got buses. The buses, if you had come to Serena that time, mm. there were buses. Gaga coach by then. Mm. There were four or five buses mm. outside in the parking. They came from Arua, watched the show and boarded and came back to Aroa. Wow. So I had a lot of support. That's because most of my job, because I was introducing man from Mbokolo and I got a lot of, because I'm part of the West Nile uh, team, the West yeah. Nile team uh, in, in Kampala. The, the so, yeah, the Aruna Suarez, the Alakas, the Ejikus. Tanki. Yeah, the Tankis. We, 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 it's a big, big, big group. So uh, they came in full, full support and uh, it was a beautiful moment because every t even my opening, mm. my opening act was Lingala. <laughs> okay. I got some guys from here yeah. who were about eight on stage, mm -hmm. and then we danced to a Tamasha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a very good ah, intro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, the comic, you, uh, you organize the comic. You're yeah. the main head for, uh, for the comic. I'm not yeah. saying uh, they, they, you're not there that. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the, 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 the main idea. Yeah. Uh, tell us about uh, this particular. How did you organize this event? It was, I mean, this uh, competition, it was really nice. Yeah. Right. Honestly, I, I'm a big fan of comedy in Uganda. I'm a very, very huge fan. And uh, when they say comedy in Uganda, I am one of the blessed people to, to come up, the names to come up. And you cannot just let an industry like that, whereby, you know, every time they say comedy, your name pops up to just die. And it was dying, yeah. if, if you could agree together. Because we were doing the same things. Mm. The thing had become stagnant. You have the same comedians performing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in different venues. Mm. It had become stale, people are repeating jokes, there was no fresh talent, and unfortunately, comedy has not had the platform that mm -hmm. music has. Yeah. You understand, music, everywhere there's a talent search, there's a singing competition, there is this. Mm -hmm. Comedy has not had that. Even, even in awards, you... Even in awards, they use musicians. The recently, Thank you very much. Yes. They only, look, like they can say, best comedian. How can you say best comedian? It's, it's very insulting, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. Because you cannot compare me and Mariachi. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You cannot say the best comedian is Mariachi because he makes people laugh in Luganda. Mm. If he comes to Arua, what will happen? Nothing. You understand? Uh, so it's, it's an insult to categorize the whole, of, the whole industry <laughs> in one, uh, one award, mm. to give it one award. So it's, 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 it, it was, it's something that we needed to fight. And the only way we can fight that is if the industry grows, if it's become bigger, if we have new comedians. Every comedian now wants to perform like Mariachi. Mm. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, Every comedian wants to be vulgar. Even it's th there's a boy I watched some two weeks ago. Mm. I had never seen him perform. Mm. But I was like this. Wow. I could not believe. Because mm. this is somebody you're just seeing for the first time. And they are talking things which <laughs> they blow your mind away. So I was like, what? So this is how we are going to attract people to join the industry, by singing vulgar, vulgar, uh, by doing vulgar, vulgar jokes. So I needed to create something new. That's why uh, when we were doing the comic, I was very, very clear. No, vulgar, yeah. no vulgarity, no profanity. You need to be clean because, you remember, people yeah. used to come with their children. But how many will do that for any other ordinary show? People used to come for their, with their children because it was a clean show. So that's, that's something I, I wanted to build. And it's something we want to build slowly by slowly. And I'm very, very proud of you guys who were part of it because up to today, people are still talking about the show. Yeah. It ended a couple of months back, but up to today, people are still talking about the show. That means it created a very, very big impact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, particularly for us, some of us in West Nile, it has opened bigger ways for us. Like, 
people's perception about comedy <coughs> is slightly changing because yeah. some, there were some of us on TV and said, if these guys can go there, that means our comedy is another level. Right. Um, in, in relation to that, I have to, for two questions. One, about um, well, your plan for Western comedians and yeah. entertainment entertainers generally, because in the year 2015, if I'm correct, yeah. You, you had plans of uh, up, uh, camp, uh, moving to regions to have yes. talent such. Yes. And one of the places, because the last time you came here uh, to do a show yeah. in, uh, in the, at Heritage Coach, yes. you actually promised to say that the, you will be coming to Arua yes. to do a particular show for West Nilers to get talent yes. from there. Uh, what happened? Because uh, you didn't come. Yeah, uh, such a venture also involves a lot of money. Yeah. Involves a lot of cost. Because uh, my plan was to do a countrywide search for the comic. Okay. A countrywide search, but unfortunately the sponsors backed out. 2015, I had actually closed the deal with one of the biggest telecom companies, MTN. <laughs> I had closed yeah. the deal. Everything was done. It was going to be a countrywide search, and then uh, new management came in. So there was a new CEO, a new CMO, and when they came, they cancelled whatever the old regime did. Wow. So we had to start from zero. And then uh, when we went back to resell the idea. The new guys didn't want to know. They just <laughs> okay. it, trashed it. So the reason why we did the comic and were best in only Kampala was the money involved. It's very, very expensive venture. Because now when you're doing regional, you have to book a venue, you have to book people, you have to pay this, you have to pay this, and all that involves money. But with, it's, 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 it's now, the fact that we have given birth to it, mm. it's now time for it to, to grow. To grow. Mm. And that's how it's only going to grow. And that's the best way. And the beauty is now I have a representative in West Nile. I don't even have to come here. I just say, hey, uh, Josh, mm. send me a budget. Mm. I need you to organize uh, guys in Arua, Koboko, Maracha, Vura, Iwea, whichever. Mm. Do a talent, send me the best five. Okay. And then I go to Gulu, the same thing. I don't even have to come here. I can come here on the final. Mm. So now that I have representatives, and the beauty is in, in the comic, we had diversity. Yeah. We had people from Barada, from Arua, wow. from this, from that. The first, so the first day was over. Thousands of people. Thousand like people. The same thing happened. He pushed, I, I, I went as early as around the seven. Yeah. I, 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 I did my audition at around eight. eight. So, so that's how it is. So imagine we decentralize it, mm. and then in Arua you do, and then in Kampala we only do the best. Mm. The best five from Arua, from Gulu, from where, and then we do those. That would be very, very beautiful, and it would have saved a lot. Wow. So it's just one step at a time, baby yeah. steps, yeah. Did you joke about the storm? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, did a, I did a song. I, did, I, I didn't joke about it on stage, <laughs> but I did a video uh, of a song. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you heard that song. That's Tony Witchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's Tony Witchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh -huh. Now, me, I changed the version. Yeah. <laughs> I said, that's Tony Wichi, that's Tony Wichi, they throw us through at Museveni, we have rejected this. <laughs> okay, what? I think I'm behind you already. <laughs> <laughs> we refused that story. No, 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 no. We refused it. Sebo <laughs> here, brother. Uh, did, did you listen to that song? What you know? What when I do something, I do not, I do not over give it too much attention because anything can happen. Yeah, but most times, you know, I have friends who are who, are, who work in. Uh, in uh, those big offices. So they call you and they say, ah, but you man, this thing is very funny, but why, why always? Eh? So I said, no, it's just to, to, to lighten the situation and everything, and I said, okay. Uh, boom, boom, hey, yo, what's up? This is your boy, Patrick Salva, the man from Mbokolo, the girls, them sugar, the most handsome West Nyla. After Idi Amin. <laughs> and you're watching the Zap Show right here on the West Nile web. Big up on yourselves. Baby, the devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, me, 
I'm ugly, I know. I know. But I have money. <laughs> there is no rich man who is ugly. You ask Aliomi. <laughs> Every ugly man who has money has inner booty. Listen, ladies, you can know that you've given birth to uh, uh, you, you're pregnant now. When you push and the baby comes out, give your friends. That's how you know that your baby is either beautiful or injured. <laughs> give them. If your friends start saying, oh, super la la la, just know your baby is beautiful. But if you give them and they start, but I carried the child in the womb for nine months. I carried the child in the womb for nine months. Nine months? Do you know how, I, how long I've carried the child in Mecca for? <laughs> for life. People see a man walking like this and they're like, oh my God, he has swag. It is not swag. It is ball control. This thing is a hurt day. Hold on, DJ, hold on, DJ, hold on, DJ. You, you can sense Matilu was a rich musician. There is a way Greek musicians perform on stage totally different from the broke musicians. <laughs> Matilu never used to shake, shake. He would just... It is the same. Here, the Greek musicians, uh, Navio, like Navio. When you see Navio performing, he doesn't shake himself. The man is just in one place. Ngalo, he he. Actually, you're the ones who are responding. Ngalo, he he. Ngalo, he he. Ngalo, he he. Ngalo. After three minutes, he's very tired. They have to put to sit him down. They do medical checkup. What what? They give him juice. They give him massage. What? They check HIV, hepatitis. What? They check breast cancer. What what? Everything. They do a pregnancy test. <laughs> You get a poor musician, Coco Finger. <laughs> From the beginning of the song to the end, shaking the children all the time. <laughs> that is why they produce children who walk like this. <laughs> I have bad news from Kampala. Our friend of people power, Stella Nyanzi, uh, was once again arrested, as you know. Yeah, she's in Luzirawambi, we pray for her. But I think when she comes out, she should stop abusing the president. Because when she abuses the president, she annoys the president, but also makes news reading very hard for the local news readers. <laughs> in vernacular, very hard. It is easy, like when she abused the president that he looks like a pair of buttocks. Eh? It was easy for the English news readers, because they would come uh, Makerere University lecturer, Dr. Sela Nyanzi, has been sent to Lozira for calling President Museveni a pair of buttocks. Simple! <laughs> for those of you who know Uganda, hmm? it was hard for the Uganda to mention buttocks. Because <laughs> they would come. Wamu sobe sobe Makerere, Dr. Sela Nyanzi, wamu sindi se mukomera e Lozira, Rua Kuvuma, President Museveni, mbu afa nana. Ah, ah, but you can break. My people, my people, they eat so. Eat so, didn't they? They were just mentioning. Even if you don't know at so, you can understand. I see some people in the corner, Stella Nyanzi, Nessa Ngari Luzira, and why more of them? They be put on schedule. We see here a loop after. Even Acholis, Acholis. First of all, they hate government. So it was an opportunity to repent. They were reading the news with excitement. They would come. You know, they like to come like it's a Nasara school on TV. Hello. Good evening, viewers. This one is Ochokuchan Muses, reading the news to you on Guru TV. We have only one headline, buttocks.
and then and then he started in the language appointment makere university dr sela nyanzi otumu wa elizira prison belong of president museveni today are you me mama even even across the border in kenya kenya tanzania they were also suffering the same news bulletin Mfundisaji wa Makere University Dr. Sela Nyanzi amepelekwa Aluzira Prison kwa sababu ya kutokana na Rais wa Uganda Yoweri Museveni ndi anafanana mata matafali mbili ya nyuma.